to start our exploration with hypermedia, we start with something basic like a picture. I mean, look for something like a key figure in the history of hypermedia, the neighbor bush. We find all these pictures, click on a picture, and that picture leads us to text. Another form of hypermedia. We can look through the text, and we can find links to other text embedded within it, following this chain of information that we can just keep drilling down into, always going back to the original piece that we found. As we keep going, we find our third and fourth versions of hypermedia video and audio. And the relations, the resemblances between the brain's operations and the operations of a modern analytical machine is a fascinating aspect of it. And we can keep drilling through our information until we get to primary source material. And that primary source material allows us to see exactly what all this originated from. And for education, the process of tying two items together is the important thing. And when we look at this, and find this to be so interesting that we want to save it for later. We can start to use the machine as part of our mind. And when we do this, we can add it to something like Instapaper, which allows us to go back to it, or more importantly, allows us to organize it so that we can begin to create organization within the things we discover so we can begin to see the links so we can go from Bush and we can go back to JC Licklider and his writings on the man computer symbiosis using the machine to extend ourselves but we can go beyond just this hyperlinking of text to text or having a document that has pictures in it we can actually start to use the language of iconography and our students can use the language of iconography. They can produce a product like a photograph and within that photograph they can begin to add links to it. They can link back to their research or they can link to other pieces of their knowledge so that you can see that trail, you can see them linking everything together. The beauty of all of this is that it causes you causes the students, causes everyone to think about what they're trying to represent, think deeper about what they've learned or what they need to learn, and organize it so that they can represent it. And in representing something in a photo, we can now make the photo worth far more than a thousand words. We can make it worth as much as we want it to be worth. We can take this another step further and we can go into video. Video, again, causes us or the students to have to think about what they're trying to represent. Now we're getting beyond just the learning of something and we're getting to the representation of something. And that's when we truly start to embed that knowledge, to make that knowledge work for us, to ensure that the students have gotten what they needed because they have to represent it back to it.